levels of voting. Look, a record 93 million Americans have already cast their ballot ahead of Election Day. Now, that's a sign of a vibrant democracy. But not everyone wants to see high turnout. Uh, they had things, uh, levels of voting that if you ever agreed to it, you'd never have a Republican elected in this country again. Now, typically candidates try to win the most votes on Election Day. It's called democracy. But there is a dark history of an alternate approach. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Now that quote from conservative activist Paul Weikert gives away the game. And make no mistake, barring a blowout, Team Trump is planning to contest the election in court and possibly declare victory regardless of the outcome. Now, Trump likes to describe his supporters as a silent majority. Call it silent majority. A silent majority. The silent majority. Which is why it's interesting that he doesn't look like he thinks he's going to win a majority. Because he's never been a majority president. In 2016, he lost the popular vote by a historic amount. And he's the only president in the history of Gallup never to be above 50% approval. Now, Trump is the first incumbent in history not to really try to win the popular vote. Now, according to the Center for Public Integrity, Republicans have set aside some $20 million dollars on more than two, 300 court battles, all trying to make it more difficult to vote during a pandemic in an attempt to win that narrow electoral college victory. They've sued to block the counting of mail-in ballots postmarked by Election Day. They've blocked limited ballot drop-off boxes to one per county in Texas and tried to invalidate nearly 127,000 votes in Houston. In Pennsylvania, election officials have accused the Trump campaign of trying to suppress mail-in votes while the Democratic AG says they're intimidating early voters. And court-ordered post office data shows a big-time declines in swing state mail-in ballots being delivered on time. Now, all this is happening against the drumbeat of Trump trying to sow doubts about our elections by baselessly proclaiming there will be widespread fraud, an idea being amplified by Russian disinformation. All of this is an attempt to suppress the popular vote and create maximum chaos around the election, which Trump hopes to take advantage of. Now, Axios reports that Trump is planning to declare victory on election night regardless of how many votes still have to be counted. Now, of course, Trump denies this, but listen closely to his advisor yesterday. President Trump will be ahead on election night, probably getting 280 electoral somewhere in that range, and then they're going to try to steal it back after the election. Got that? They're planning to call the full and fair counting of votes stealing the election. Well, if anything, it would be the president trying to steal the election because it isn't really over until every eligible vote is counted. Meanwhile, a loser declaring themselves the winner doesn't change reality, but it would open the door to conflict and a constitutional crisis. Trump's voter suppression strategy reveals political weakness and a deep discomfort with democracy. But one thing's for sure, this election will tell us whether his passionate supporters really are a silent majority or just a loud minority. And that's your reality check.